All right, so we're going to federate two independent, very basic little React apps. What we have starting out is pretty much this. And on port 3002, we have another single page application that has a button on it. What I want is the button from this bundle to be federated into another bundle over the wire in real time. We're going to have a quick look at our apps just to see what they look like. Nothing fancy, normal React app, normal entry point, Webpack config, pretty standard. If we go to the application one, same deal. And if we look at its source, very, very simple little apps. Now we're going to get this file loaded over the wire, deployed independently into application one. So to do that, we need to do a few things. First, we need to use the module federation plugin itself. So I'll import it from here in Webpack. And seeing as I already have this pre-configured, I'm just going to copy this over. And we're going to call it app2. The library is optional, but I'm leaving it there for now. And we're going to give it a file name so that module federation will emit a special remote entry that app1 knows how to find. And what that will pretty much do is create an interface layer between the two. Seeing as I know that I want to share button or use button inside of app1, I'm going to go ahead and expose it as button. And I don't want to download React or React DOM twice between these things, so I'm going to pretty much say that they're shared. One other important thing that you will need to do in the current release, there's a pull request open that solves this, but you need to make sure that your public path is explicitly set to the URL it comes from. Otherwise, when you try to federate code, it's going to just federate it off of the typical forward slash. So when I look for a button, uh, module federation is going to just try to go to port 3001 and find a non-existent chunk. So I pretty much specify the public path and the pull request we have open will make this so that you can dynamically set it from inside of the host or application number one. And that should pretty much set us up over here from the looks of it. And then I need to go over to app one and have the plug in there. Also give it a public path. And I need to do more or less the same kind of thing here. And you'll see this one's called app one and it expects a remote of app two. And that's pretty much what the naming conventions are. It's so that Webpack, when compiling, understands if an import is meant to come from a remote location or if the import is somewhere on the file system. In this case, it's expecting a remote module to be created. At the same time, we also want to share React and React DOM. What this will do is when it federates the remote code in, the remote is allowing itself to be overridden. But if any of these dependencies are missing, the remote's more than capable of loading it. But in this case, I'm having the host say, use my copies of it. So they both have opted into sharing React. When I load button inside of this one, it's going to use the, the React dependencies of app one, not download an entire bundle with its dependencies as well. So, what we need to do next is change our entry point just a little bit. So you'll notice here I've got a normal entry point. It looks like this. Most apps look like that. In the current build, what we have to do is provide a promise because we're sharing code. And Webpack needs to boot itself. And the normal Webpack runtime that gets emitted is going to immediately execute the entry point. So what we need to do is actually offset that so there's a promise so that we can kind of hold up that execution for a moment to let the Webpack runtime interface with any remotes and understand what it needs or already has. So the easiest way to do that is just move your normal entry point, move it into like a bootstrap file or whatever, and then just dynamically import that bootstrap. Webpack can now hoist things up to a promise if it needs to. 
And if I go down here, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. And we'll drop it in there. Okay. So that should get the apps running. And if we don't do that bootstrap, that uh, dynamic import on the bootstrap, usually what you'll see in the terminal is uh, like a error that says, uh, cannot find method call of undefined. So the other thing that I want to do is make sure that app one is actually loading that remote entry that gets emitted from app two. And this is the little interface. If you don't want to put this in your HTML, you can inject it with, you know, JavaScript or something like that. Um, and if you're worried about caching, you can use uh, cache headers if you use a CDN, or you could just put date now on the end of it and inject a fresh copy every time. The actual remote entry system is only about three kilobytes when you use gzip. So it doesn't contain any code. It's purely just a special runtime that acts as an interface between two different Webpack systems. So now that I've got remote entry available to me, what I should be able to do is jump down here into our app. And what I'm going to try and do is pretty much get something from app two, which is the name that we've given it here. So I'm looking up this namespace essentially. So I'm going to go and dynamically import it and I'll just use suspense like that. And we'll see if it runs. So let's restart everything now that we've added all of this together. And there we go. So two different ports, two different builds entirely. Battery's about to die. And if I go and look down here, you'll notice that I've got a whole bunch of stuff from 3001, which is this server where it's deployed. You'll see that I'm using port 3001's version of React and React DOM, but you'll see down here that I'm loading the button file or this button component from port 3002. So I've essentially weaved together two standalone applications at runtime. And this is a very basic example, but this is kind of all you need to get up and running with a federated application.